I'm at the most prized wine region of the world. Join me as I ride, eat, and drink my way through Bordeaux, France. Come along while we ride into a 17th century military fort that today accommodates vacationers. We'll find lots of places to let the horses be horses. We'll get to know one of the most accomplished tour guides in riding vacation. And go behind the scenes to see how some fine restaurants celebrate their local cuisine using regional recipes. Tour underground in a monolithic wine cellar while the horses experience their very first boat ride. I'm Jolene Hardignano. Welcome to my show, Main Course. After I wrote my book about starting a restaurant, I decided to create videos combining my love of horseback riding with the discovery of out-of-this-world cuisine. Our first stop is Bordeaux, France. Located in the southwest of France, near the Atlantic coast, Bordeaux is the most important wine region in the country. They have over 7,000 wine-producing chateaus. We start our journey in the oldest wine area in Bordeaux. The great landscape of Saint-Emilion is a site on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Our ride continues in the town of Saint-Emilion, where I met our guide, Michelle Amat, and our two riding companions, Lucy and Warren, both from the Northeast U.S. As Bordeaux is the oldest wine region in France, Saint-Emilion is the oldest wine area of Bordeaux. UNESCO said the natural environment had been transformed to a landscape of monumental value. After a relaxed ride around the countryside, Quana, my sweet horse, had the right idea. Time to eat! Lunch is prepared fresh daily with local cheeses, local wine, and other French fare. Then a toast. Cheers. Cheers. Well, we just finished our first trail. Yep. And uh, I have to be honest, I was more concerned about staying on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is very safe. <laughs> and I did stay on the horse, so that was a success. Um, so with that, um, I don't know exactly what areas we passed. I remember okay. St. George, yeah, yeah. but can you summarize for us what yeah. areas we passed? Okay, yes, we, st we started from the Chateau Farget in, a, um, in the saint Emilion area, and uh, we passed the Chateau La Roque, uh -huh. and then we went through the little village of uh, Saint-Christophe-des-Bardes, and after that we um, we rode uh, down in a valley uh, to um, um, Saint-Georges, uh, Saint the Chateau Saint-Georges. Okay. And then we went um, on a little uh, trail and passed the Chateau Les Tours, which is, this one is not, uh, this, this one is not a vineyard, but it's more like a, uh, like a sort of medieval uh, castle, like a wound, as you saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we, uh, we managed actually, we didn't get lost, so we managed <laughs> to, to arrive for the picnic lunch. After lunch, we rode to Chateau du Montbadon. According to vintner Baron de Montfort, Montbadon was constructed in the early 1300s, around the beginning of the Hundred Years' War. Since the early 1600s, the estate has been owned by the same family. Our leisurely ride to Saint-Emilion seems to transport us back to antiquity. Every ride ends at some point, but the fun continues. In St. Emilian, there's so much to do. We had the opportunity to see breathtaking monolithic architecture. Entire buildings carved from a single piece of stone, including this church. The town's charming streets are lined with cafes and shops selling their renowned wine. But there's another thing they're known for. This town is also known for their macaroons. Handed down from across the generations, and according to the tourist office of Saint-Emilion, the recipe goes back to the 17th century when the Ursuline sisters established their convent there. But the wine, of course, is the main attraction, and wine cellars such as the Cave du Manoir freely open their space to the curious. The sociable and knowledgeable employee, Florian Benot, takes me for a tour. 
they house wines from some of the most coveted vineyards of Saint Emilion, with rare and recent vintages. Of course, we had to try. So now he's walking on the classical uh, way to make it. Day two. Michelle and the riders get ready. We're at uh, Citadel de Bourg, and which is right along the Giron River. We're going to be riding along it, following Michelle to the Citadel de Blay, and from there we'll be taking a ferry boat to the Medoc region. See you later. Blay is on the bank of the Gironde estuary. According to the tourist office, the citadel was built by military engineer Vauban in 1686 to protect Bordeaux from enemy ships. The ride over the bridge into the fort made history come alive for all of us. Families with children find the site welcoming, with plenty of open grassy spaces for picnics. The structure is magnificently preserved. Outside the citadel, we make our way to the port where we'll connect with our ferry to the Medoc region. Our horses were a little uneasy boarding as this was their first boat ride. And what a ride! The Gironde estuary is where the Dordogne and Garonne rivers meet, approximately 38 miles long and 2 to 7 miles wide. We were lucky to make it to shore before those storm clouds on the horizon drenched us with the rains that nourished the vineyards. We finally arrived to Chateau Péberlan, a four-star hotel in the village of Mouly. I just had to take a look around. Although the level of elegance and refinement is unsurpassed, it is still welcoming and comfortable. Now that I'm rested and recharged, it's time for dinner. Just a few blocks away in the village, we find La Bouldor, a restaurant that appeals to locals. We had the chance to sample Chef Luigi's salmon tartare, duck confit, and of course, the wine. Owner Jean-Claude Bonfon recalled bringing Luigi to La Bouldor. I find my chef, uh, I have a waitress. She told me I know a good, a very good chef in Bordeaux. So I'm going where he stay Luigi at the moment, and I tell him, uh, I pay good money, <laughs> and he's coming here. It's two years ago now. What is your philosophy with your cooking? In a little mistake in translation, Jean-Claude actually asked Luigi what he enjoys cooking the most. Fish and uh, typical um, product, uh, lo local product, production. You know the duck, the liver, uh, liver, uh, liver duck. La lamproie, ça va être compliqué. Hein. Ah ouais. Mmh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> special, special, especially for uh, the south of west. Ouais. The cooking, so. ouais, c'est dur à expliquer ça. But he, la, he love to, to prepare the fish. Mm -hmm. Ouais. ouais. The fish. Especially the fish. Yeah. Hein. Ça va être plus simple. Mm. Ça. Do you cook like that at home? Est-ce que tu cuisines à la maison? Oui. 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 J'ai une femme qui adore ça, oui. Donc oui, oui. <rire> J'ai une femme. Ah non, je suis en Tu cook à la maison? Oui. Ok, je euh, suis single. Ok, elle est célibataire. Bon, bah, allez. <rire> Our third day continues through the Medoc region with a landscape featuring panoramas of chateaux such as La Nassan and La Tour. Pichon Longueville is spectacular with its beautiful historical grounds integrated with modern technology. It's located in the Pouillac region of Bordeaux, mainly harvesting the Cabernet Sauvignon grape. I got a chance to sit with their sommelier, Corinne Richaud. She explained that she worked for a time in England. And I've been working for uh, chefs 
uh, Gordon Ramsay. I don't know if you know sure, the chef. Yeah. yeah. So I was uh, at sommelier. I'm, uh, I was buying wine for him, and I started to work in uh, Chateau Pichon Longueville uh, two years ago. Tell us what a typical day is for you here. Uh, I'm drinking from <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. So uh, no, I'm um, I'm uh, I'm working all uh, from nine o'clock. You know, French people it's not working too much. Huh? Uh, but uh, well, from nine o'clock in the morning till uh, six o'clock on the night, and the day is to look after the customer, to to welcome uh, you. Uh, to uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, visitors, so we've got in the year to give you an idea huh? uh, a year. We've got uh, 8,000 uh, visit, uh, visitors, uh, a lot of Americans, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, a lot of French as well, um, from the w everywhere in the world. Huh? But, uh, uh, a lot of Californians. A lot of Californians. <laughs> they, they're comparing, comparing sorry, their vineyard with our vineyard. So they're <laughs> looking what they can do and what we're doing better or, or less. Huh? But, uh, but well, what, uh, what makes you? Different. What makes Pichon Longueville different? different? With, uh, what our uh, best part is the vineyard. Huh, is uh, what is very important and what makes us different is because we've got a, a very, very uh, important vineyard and soil. Uh, we are uh, well located in uh, in France. We've got the Gironde in the front of us, mm -hmm. the estuaire. So the water. We've got a very good weather. You know that, yes, huh? it's uh, very sunny. It changes and, uh, at every turn. We've got a bit of uh, rain when we want it to and some sun when we want it to as well. Corinne treats us to our tour of the cellar, nearly two stories underground. And as always, we taste the product. In some locations, fast-moving cars and trucks share the roadway with our team, and in one case, the horses were spooked. When we settled in later, I spoke with Michel about his experiences leading these expeditions. I've been doing, well, especially that kind of tour since 15 years, but um, uh, I, I'm around horses since uh, 35 years. I started to ride here 35 years ago. Uh, before I was um, an accountant near Paris, <laughs> only for two years, but um, didn't really like my job. Well, it's not like I didn't really like my job, but I didn't want to do it for 40 years. So I uh, had to make a choice, so I quit my job and uh, I started to work uh, around horses. And uh, well, taking more lessons, of course, and uh, getting certificates. Uh, to teach, to take people on trail. What, what was your inspiration, namely for Western? Oh, oh well, <clears throat> I guess it's from the little boy um, watching too many uh, Western movies with John Wayne or Clint Eastwood. Or <laughs> yeah, well, became true. <laughs> <laughs> Our next to last day started with bright and beautiful skies and grassy meadows perfect for galloping. We're still in the Medoc region and you can tell by its soil. It's sandy with lots of gravel and stone. Today we rode along the Gironde River, headed north and got a little lost along the way, but still found our way to Chateau Loudan. And uh, this place is definitely worth seeking. It's not the biggest, but the people here are the warmest. Chateau Loudan extends to over 330 acres and is classified as Medoc Cru Bourgeois. Planted grapes include Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Sauvignon Blanc, and Semillon. They offer wines in three colors, red, white, and of course, rosé. Owners Marie-Claude and Jean-Paul Lafragette welcome us into their happy estate. Is pink your favorite color? Pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, pink uh, it's uh, very important for us. 
pink. Yeah, it's it's the um, symbolize. Yes. Symbolize uh, women. The roses, the the color of the chateau, uh, the wine, uh, the pink. We have the rosé. Pink de Louden. Mm -hmm. It's a blend between uh, Merlot grape and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Attaché François Reverdy says production expanded with innovation in 1875. Yeah, they, they bring uh, new technology from England. Uh, they try to uh, uh, to use horses to uh, to um, um, to grow the vines, to work the vines. The vines. Uh, they you, you will see uh, inside they build. Um, new uh, uh, concrete tank which were uh, very uh, uh, modern for, the, for this time and they start to, uh, to plant and to, uh, to grow uh, uh, white grapes. Uh, we, are in, we were and we are still in a red wine region and uh, since uh, 1878 uh, the Chateau du Den uh, is doing a white, uh, a wine white, um, and Which uh, grape? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc and uh, Sémillon. Sémillon is a white grape uh, uh, from Bordeaux. Francois says the oak barrels from five different manufacturers are from the central part of France. He maintains that this oak is the best in the world. He says it allows just the right amount of oxygen to pass from the atmosphere to the aging wine. We sampled all three colors. Tomorrow we are heading to the beach and Michelle says this will be something new for the horses. But they never went on the beach, so <laughs> this might be also a challenge. <laughs> but everything will be this okay, no problem. This is the first time for a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Well, everything is new. Everything is new. Everything is new. Well, yeah, tomorrow I'm ready to race you. Are you ready? Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
uh, to take over, and uh, we started uh, our own business here. And you met your wife in England, right? I met my wife in England. She's Scottish. <laughs> she was my boss, and uh, we had them together. And you recruited her. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love most about being back in Bordeaux? Back in, uh, we like uh, we like the wine. So that's the very best place to be for the wine. There are so many chateaux around for the wine, and so different cultures of wine. We got the ocean, the Atlantic here, just here next to us. We've got the forest next to us. What a wild one, so it's quite pleasant. With that visit, we wrapped up our riding adventure through the vineyards and beaches of Bordeaux. I felt so consumed with admiration for the region, I began to think about what tips I could provide to other travelers so their expectations will be consistent with their experience and they'll return home with the same sense of admiration. An advice that I give you if you're thinking about taking a similar trip is to remind yourself the reason why you came here in the first place and that's to have fun. Yes, you will get lost. And yes, you will feel tired and may not get to do everything you want, but every minute is going to be exciting. Uh, if you haven't had any lessons yet, uh, I suggest going to a local equestrian center and telling your instructor your goal, and that is to go on a vacation with a horseback riding tour. And depending on your ability, you may need five to 12 lessons, whatever it takes to get you to a level where you can canter. The Western saddle is much more recreational than the English saddle, so that's another consideration for you. Uh, one unforeseen thing that, that I should have anticipated on this tour um, was falling asleep. And if there was anything that was going to get me off of the horse's back, it was me sleeping on it. <laughs> uh, most of our wine tastings were in the afternoon, so when we continued our afternoon ride, um, you know, riding in the sun got me really tired. So pace yourself, uh, drink your wine, uh, but drink lots and lots of water, and be prepared to pee in the bushes. Riding through these trails, you can't help but feel connected to the environment. The soil, the scent in the air, the cool of the forest. Being a city girl, this is the best thing I could have done for myself, and I hope you feel that way too.